and that will be to uh, make a nomination for this uh, chairmanship for this subcommittee. Councilors, is there a motion to nominate uh, any of your colleagues? Do you, you have a uh, motion to nominate yeah. Councillor uh, Sandy Almonte? Yeah, I nominate. Okay, so there's a motion to nominate uh, Councillor Sandy Almonte? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. You're not going to second? Um, the second. Thank you. A motion has been made by Councillor Brian De Pena and second by Councillor Dave Abdu uh, for the nomination of Councillor Sandy Almonte. Councillor Almonte, before I do the, the Call of the vote, do you accept this nomination? I do, and thank okay. you. Um, all those in favor of the nomination of Council Armonte, please say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Congratulations, Council Armonte. Thank you. Thank you, Councillors, for the privilege of representing Personnel Committee meeting once again. I am your chair, Sandy Almonte, and now, um, sorry for the noise in the back. You can give us a second. We're just trying to figure out if they have more. Looks like they're going to be out there for a little bit. Let's just go right into our meeting and let's make a nomination for the vice chair. I am waiting for a nomination for any of the other council members at this moment. I'd like to nominate um, Councillor Dave Abdu for the vice chair. Would you like to second that, yeah, Councillor Dave Councilor Abdul, do you accept your nomination for vice chair? I will accept. Thank you. With all those in favor of Councilor Abdul being the vice chair of personnel committee meeting, please voice your uh, vote at this moment. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Congratulations, Councilor Abdul. And thank you for accepting the nomination. Moving right along with new business. New business this evening, we have document 1016, city employees and outside employment. Um, this was put on our personnel committee meeting by Councillor Maldonado. Um, Councillor Maldonado, would you care to join us? And thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, your name and address for the record, please. <laughs> Sorry, my name is Modesto Maldonado, a city councilor uh, at large at 115 Spruce Street. Um, uh, councilor Maldonado, can you just wait a second? I'm gonna have somebody go outside and... There it goes. I, nah, <laughs> let them know if they can move from there, only because I can't, I can't hear. <laughs> can you go, thank you. Thank you, officer. Officer Flores is gonna take care of that for uh, us. Councilors, uh, <clears throat> We have recently two situations uh, that we should uh, look very carefully into. Uh, one is a, a police lieutenant who reported, um, who reported uh, more working hours uh, than, uh, than he actually worked. And it is my understanding, uh, I'm not sure that this is the fact, but I think this is something that we should look into. It is my understanding that uh, this gentleman uh, uh, is being allowed to retire without being charged uh, 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 because of the fact that he was uh, stealing money from the city. And the question is, uh, Stealing is a crime, okay? And why are we allowing somebody to retire without solving the consequences? Does any common citizen that steals uh, would be allowed to simply get away with it and, uh, and, allowed, to, uh, uh, and allowed to simply you know, go by and without any punishment? I don't, I don't think that, that that's the case. I think that we should look into the situation. I think we should ask the police chief to come in front of this committee and provide an explanation as to why uh, this gentleman is being allowed to retire and why he's not being charged for, uh, uh, because of stealing from the city. Uh, there's another incident, and I am sure that you probably read uh, the newspaper, where another lieutenant uh, uh, is teaching a course at Olden SS Community College uh, 
I believe, three days a week uh, while getting paid from the city. And that is called double dipping. That is called, again, stealing from the city. And, and again, I think that, that this committee should request uh, uh, from the police chief uh, information about also this particular instance, why this lieutenant has not been suspended. The other one, the other one was suspended with pay. He was given a vacation, and now he's been allowed to retire without getting punished for stealing from the city. And again, in this second case, uh, this gentleman uh, is also double dipping because he's actually taking time from the city when he's getting paid and uh, there's no punishment. There's no investigation. Things have, are being swept under the rug. And I think that this council, this committee, should not stand for that. So I'm hoping that uh, tonight uh, this committee will request the uh, chief of police to, be, to come to this committee and explain to this committee and the city why a person who stole money from the city is being allowed to retire without being charged with the crime. Why another lieutenant that is double dipping and stealing money from the city is also being allowed to continue without being suspended or without having an investigation. So I'm hoping that this committee will take the, the necessary steps to get the chief of police in front of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Maldonado. Thank you. Do um, any, does anybody on the committee have any questions for Councilor Maldonado? I just want one, one clarification. Yes. Um, Councilor Maldonado, you mentioned uh, for the second person you said teaching a class at Northern Exodus. Taking. Taking a class. Teaching oh, a class. Teaching. Okay. Okay. Teach. All right, thank you. Teaching a class. Three thank days a week. Thank you for the clarification. Do you know what the course is that that person is um, teaching? What class it is? Or the what class is that he's teaching? What is it that this person is teaching? I don't know the class that he's okay. teaching. I know that it has to do with criminal law. Criminal law, okay. All right, counselors, if there's no other questions um, for uh, Councillor Maldonado, I would um, entertain a motion. I would like to see if um, someone can put in a motion to have the chief of police come before us and um, providing that Councillor Maldonado um, gives us the names off record that we're able to put those names in there and he can come in front of us and bring the information that we need mm -hmm. about these two individuals so that we're able to answer any, questions, any further questions that we may have. If anybody at home who is listening um, thinks that we should ask any pertinent questions, please e email us with those questions so that those could be answered here at, uh, at our committee. Um, but at this moment, I would like to um, entertain a motion to ask um, Police Chief Fitzpatrick to please come before us, um, our next personnel committee meeting, which will be, we will give the date um, at the end of this meeting, so that we could find out what actions were taken, if any, um, or will there be any actions taken now that there um, has been light to these situations that are happening? So, is anyone motioning for this? Yeah, make a motion. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Maldonado. So, we do expect um, Police Chief to be down here for that. Next item on the agenda document. Oh, sorry. What is the date of the next meeting that you want him to come to? Uh, Councillor, Pres Council President, would you? What date? Our next full council would be next Tuesday. So the next full the council will be Tuesday, uh, January the 19th. So um, it would be seven. Yeah, my suggestion will be, uh, Madam Chair, is that um, why don't we discuss it when we are done with these items? Okay. So I could, I could su uh, suggest to you. Because the next day would be the 21st, the next Tuesday, I believe, yeah. after that. So we'll discuss it at that moment, okay? Okay. Just to be able to ensure that we have okay. the Okay, I'm looking for a motion to table the item. Motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Document 1416 is the appointment to the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority of Ms. Michelle Millenkin. Um, and 
this is, it does not say for how long the appointment is. It just says that um, <coughs> it's just for an appointment to the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority. Do we not have any information as to how long this position is going to be? It does not say. Is Michelle here? Can you please come to the podium? Thank you. Your name and address for the record, please? Michelle Melanson, 16 Lenox Street. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Michelle Melanson. Oh, Melanson, okay. I wanted to say your last name the correct way. <laughs> sorry. It's common. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, do you know how long your appointment is for? I don't. You don't. Do you know if you're replacing anybody? Excuse me? Do you know if you're, if you're going for an empty chair, if you're replacing anybody? Uh, I, honestly, I'm not sure. You're not sure. Um, is there anybody here in the audience that, from uh, the referring people from upstairs on the third floor? No one's here? Okay. Counselors, um, we should move ahead and, if you would like, interview um, the candidate. But we don't know what we're voting her in for, so I'm not sure if you guys would like to um, ent still interview her at this point and figure out what we're going to do as into, I, I'll accept a recommendation as into what we should do regarding the appointment if we'll have it before it goes up to full council, if it should be tabled here for incomplete information, which is what we have been doing in the past. But then again, um, for incomplete information, I don't want to have to start withdrawing without prejudice for something as simple as this. I mean, she's here, and I don't think that it would be fair. But for incomplete documentation, that's what we have done. And since there have been instances where um, the 45 days get put through, like what if we have a snowstorm in the next time or, or whatever the situation may have, and people just get appointed for being on the list and not being interviewed the right way. So I will take a recommendation of this committee to see where we should follow up. Um, Councilor Abdu? Madam Chair, um, with respect to the candidate, I would suggest, well, actually, Madam Chair, I turn it back to you I as think, yes. the Chief of Staff is here. Uh, I, well, I was going to call you Councilor Eileen for now. <laughs> um, are you here to um, let me know how many years are the, or are you just? It's five years. It's a five year appointment. Councilor, can you, I mean, <laughs> Laney, can you please come up to the microphone? Your name and address for the record, please. Eileen Burnell, Chief of Staff, Tamir Rivera, and I reside at 257 Mount Vernon Street here in the city. Thank you. I just had a couple questions. So it's a five-year term. Yep, Will sorry. she be replacing anybody, or how does the this go about? The term is currently expired. It expired in August of 2015. Uh, the current candidate did not reapply, so it's been vacant. He's been serving as a holdover, um, the current member, but his term has been expired since August. And then, so Michelle's term would run for five years starting in August of 2015. Okay, and the other person that was holding this position, it was whom? It was James Patrick O'Donohue. He was serving the remaining two years on the prior term when someone had resigned. I don't know who resigned, so I apologize. Okay, so he was just serving the end of a two-year term. That's correct. Okay, um, was there a letter or anything sent to him letting him know that, um, well, I mean, you're saying that he didn't reapply. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I, I don't, his term expired in August and I wasn't in the mayor's office in August. I don't know if any correspondence was sent out to him. I don't think they typically send you correspondence when your term expires though on any of our boards. So I don't think that's customary for any of our boards. Okay. I do know that Mr. Um, O'Donohue was here during the last meeting because he wanted to speak on this item, but he's not here today. But let's just go ahead. This is for the appointment of, um, for, this, for this seat for the five-year term, and I will open it up to the committee for any questions for Ms. Mellington. Any questions for her at this moment on the committee? Councilor Abdu? Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Melanson, thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. Um, thank you for representing District E, being from Lenox Street. <laughs> um, why do you want to accept this um, potential board opportunity at this time? 
I think, uh, I think uh, you know, I got involved with this because I continue to have ideas that I would love to pursue in the city, you know, just continuously. You know, I've, you know, my history has been pretty active in trying to, you know, help with economic development and so on and so forth. So it's something that I'm pretty passionate about and I think that, you know, some ideas that I have and, uh, you know, some of my background in project planning could, you know, be useful for this board. Through you, Madam Chair? Yes, you may. What, um, what can you bring as an individual um, to this uh, Lawrence V Development Authority, which I believe is a five-person board? What, 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 what would you look to bring? What is unique to Michelle Melanson that you can bring to this board? <clears throat> uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, unique. I'm not sure because I don't know any of the other members of the board, and I really, oh. at this point, I'm Passion. not passion is what I bring yeah but uh, you know I there's ideas that I've had for you know for example you know I've, I'm infatuated with St. Anne's Parish it's been for sale for two hundred thousand dollars I keep saying it would be an amazing music hall or you know a um, you know an open mic night there's parking issues so on and so forth but things like that historic buildings in the city that are getting torn down or really not taken advantage of things like that like preserving the history of the city um, in, in passion, obviously, is another thing, but, um, you know, I really have to be involved and see, you know, what the job entails in order to put that to work, but it, Lawrence is something that I'm passionate about since I've been here. I've been here for about five years. I would love to, you know, make a difference in any way I can. It's kind of hard when you're a single person, but I think if you're a part of a unit, you know, you have more power to make changes and positive changes for the city. Thank you. Madam Chair, no further questions. Councillor DePainter, do you have any questions for our candidate? I don't have any question. Thank you. Um, Councillor? No, I'm all set. Thank you, Madam Chair. And President, no? Thank you. Um, I guess some of those questions were just answered. Do you have any type of background that, that can help you? Because I know that there's some stuff on here, so if, maybe if you wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how long you've lived in the city and... Um, is, there, I, is there any expertise that you have taken that you think will benefit you being part of the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority? Do you know any background, like law background, that has to do with it? Or? Well, I moved here on purpose. <laughs> I bought a house on Lenox Street um, in Lawrence. You know, um, I fell in love with the house. I wanted it. It was, you know, the father of the bride house, so to speak. And I saw it, and I wanted to move in. Knowing, you know, I grew up in Drake it, so I knew some of the challenges that Lawrence had. But um, I really wanted to, I felt like if I was going to buy a home in the city that I was going to be committed to doing what I could to make positive changes for the city. Um, I grew up in Riviere, kind of an inner city kid, you know, so I kind of have that background and I kind of gravitate towards that, you know, the diversity and whatnot. Um, for a job, I work at Avid Technology. I, um, I'm a manager of infrastructure projects and I deliver projects for the company that could be, you know, I've been told they're impossible projects. You know, <clears throat> I handle over 600 engineers in our infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't really, I don't, I don't know if it actually pertains to what we'd be doing here, but project planning and, and being passionate about the city is, I think, what I can bring to the job. Okay, thank you. So if there are no further questions um, <clears throat> for Ms. Melanson, I will accept a motion at this moment. Madam Chair? Yes, Councillor. I would recommend that we vote in favor of sending Ms. Melanson up to the full council with our recommendation. Would that be a favorable recommendation? Favorable recommendation, thank you. <laughs> okay, all in favor to send uh, Ms. Melanson with a, a second. favorable recommendation, sorry, you're gonna second it. All in favor to send Ms. Melanson up with a favorable recommendation to serve for a five-year term of the Lawrence Redevelopment Authority. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Now you will be um, having to come in front of the full council for the full council uh, completes the appointment. And our next full council meeting will be on the 19th. On the 19th. So be here at the 19th right. at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, counselors, next item on the agenda is document 1516, which is the appointment of the second city attorney of Mr. Brian Corrigan. Mr. Corrigan, thank you for being here this evening. Your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, uh, counselors. Um, Brian Corrigan. Uh, I live at 122 Chestnut Street, Andover, Mass. Thank you, Mr. Corrigan. I will open up uh, the committee for any questions of Mr. Corrigan. Councillor Abdu, to my right, do you have any questions for Mr. Corrigan? I will start, yes. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Corrigan, welcome. Um, I will ask you the same question I asked the last candidate. Why do you wish to serve? And um, I'll just merge the second question and ask what you bring to the table in the way of, obviously, in this case, being an attorney. Fair enough. Um, why do I want to serve? Uh, first of all, um, I love the city of Lawrence. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, my family uh, still lives here, although I don't. Um, I do uh, spend a lot of my time uh, in the city of Lawrence, um, uh, dealing with uh, clients, um, patronizing Lawrence businesses. Um, I do consider this to be my home uh, city. Um, and uh, I do feel that uh, there is a need for uh, good people who are passionate about the city um, to fill open seats um, in city government. So when I was uh, asked to consider uh, this particular position, I, um, it didn't take me very long to uh, consider. I, I have a considerable amount of experience. Um, in the law, I've been practicing for uh, over 17 years. I've had my own business uh, for 15 of those years. Um, although I have not been a municipal attorney per se, working um, in a city attorney's office, I have tremendous amount of experience from the other side of the table, um, dealing with municipalities, um, cases against municipalities, uh, dealing with various uh, local boards from zoning to planning, conservation, uh, licensing uh, boards, um, many of them in the city of Lawrence and elsewhere across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So um, I think this is really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity, really a win-win opportunity for the city and for myself. Um, I consider this to be a, um, a great opportunity. I've been here for two weeks uh, under my a temporary appointment and um, I've uh, found the work to be very challenging but certainly uh, well within my areas of expertise uh, whether it's from um, litigation matters I've uh, already in the course of my two weeks uh, dismissed one litigation matter against the city preparing to submit another motion to dismiss tomorrow on another matter uh, filed against one of the local uh, schools and um, an employee. Uh, I've been handling real estate matters, uh, taking on uh, title issues that have been um, befuddling the city for some time, trying to clean up uh, issues so that uh, city property can be properly disposed of. Um, I've been handling uh, labor relations. I uh, conducted a mediation last week. Um, on behalf of the city with the, uh, the SEIU and the inspectors union, I uh, was able to resolve part of that uh, particular uh, issue and um, that matter is ongoing and I'll be dealing with that. Um, so I, uh, I feel that, um, you know, I, 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 once again, I, I, it's just a, a great opportunity for me. It's the timing is right. Um, I, uh, I feel the city uh, has a need for this. I was asked to consider this. Um, I have the experience. Um, I love the city of Lawrence. I want to see the city of Lawrence thrive. I think it's a great city. Um, I'd like to make it better. Um, and um, so that's, that's really why I'm here. I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you. And um, I, I thought you covered a wide breadth of the legal issues that confront the city as a city attorney, whether it be the real estate or uh, labor negotiations or um, dealing with arbitrations and whatnot. So thanks for the, the breadth of the answer. 
Yeah, thank you. If I could, um, Madam Chair, I just, uh, uh, Attorney Boddy was not able to, to come tonight, but mm -hmm. uh, before he left um, this evening, he, he, uh, he left a letter that he wanted me to deliver to the sure. council. Sure. So we'll, uh, we'll have an original here and, and four copies, so I guess thank I'll, you. I'll pass these out. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, also, I'll leave the original right there. Thank you. Said letter, I would like to read into record. It is to the personnel subcommittee meeting, subcommittee, sorry, regarding the appointment of second assistant city attorney, Brian T. Corrigan. Dear counselors, I'm unavailable, I'm unable to appear for tonight's personnel subcommittee meeting due to a prior family commitment. I do, however, want to provide you with my assessment of attorney Corrigan's appointment to the position of second assistant city attorney. After all, this is an important position in the city. While I have only learned, known and worked with Attorney Corrigan for approximately two weeks, he has already been a tremendous help with our legal work. He fills in when needed and handles matters on short notice. He improves the breadth of experience in our office and has thus far proved himself both willing and capable of handling a wide variety of matters. With this fresh view of our cases, he brings new strategies and ideas to bear. He has been a cooperative, professional team player. I encourage you to give him your every due consideration and feel that he will com complement our team well. I am available to discuss this matter in more detail before the next city council meeting. Please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you, very truly yours, Attorney Charles D. Boddy, Jr. So thank you for presenting this letter. May that letter be put into, filed in the record. Any other questions um, on my right? Councillor DePena, do you have any questions for Attorney Corrigan? Uh, no, yes. Uh, I think the, um, uh, Mr. Charlie Bori come tonight. To the, it's, it's very important because uh, uh, Mr. Charlie Bori, uh, I think he make an interview for him, but I have a question for him. Not for, you have questions for attorney body. Okay. Um, okay. W was that all? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Vasquez, do you have any questions um, or comments for? Madam Chair, more, more. Uh, thank through you, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I had the opportunity to already meet with um, Attorney Kerrigan in in a matter that was affecting our city. Uh, and he was very diligent in, in getting that information, even though it happened over a weekend period. Uh, I do appreciate the extra time and commitment that he demonstrated at that moment. Uh, and he was able to assist me providing a legal opinion on the matter uh, in a timely fashion uh, to ensure that we are able to you know, move the city ahead uh, in, in, in issues that are uh, impacting us. Um, I also you know, had a, a brief discussion with him as to why he had an interest in, in, in taking this position. But I had a question now for him in regards to uh, you know, understanding the office of the city attorney today as is. It's one of those offices that gets bombarded with work, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, uh, clearly, the city attorney today says that you are willing and capable to uh, participate in even in a short notice in these matters uh, but how will you handle frustrations at times when you know cases just keep piling up uh, in the city attorney's office um, good question and, um, and thank you for the for the, uh, the supportive commentary about the matter that uh, we worked on uh, recently so um, as I indicated earlier I've been I've been working for myself now for 15 years. Um, so I bring a, I think a fresh uh, private sector uh, attitude, work ethic perspective to, to City Hall. Um, my sense is that the city attorney's office is not a nine to five job regardless. Um, however, I, uh, I've never considered my position to be the nine to five. Um, I am here to uh, handle cases 
and prosecute cases, um, particularly the matters that are uh, involving litigation that have court deadlines, contractual deadlines, what have you. <coughs> uh, if there's something that needs to be done that's deadline sensitive, it means that I may be here until midnight or over a weekend. Um, and that's just the nature of, of my business. Um, whether I'm working in private practice or whether I'm working here uh, at, in City Hall. So um, you are correct that uh, that office is a high volume office. And um, I've only really been able to get a very um, uh, brief glimpse of that. I've been taking on uh, progressively more and more legal work, but it's it's a process, and I know that Attorney Body is doing his best to to delegate a lot of this stuff uh, to me. So uh, over time, I think that um, that uh, my involvement uh, in that city attorney's office and my contributions, as Attorney Body alluded to, um, will significantly improve the overall productivity uh, up there. I. I so far enjoy very much working with Attorney Body and his staff, and um, I think they're dedicated people who do good work, uh, difficult work, and um, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to assist and to uh, make sure that the city is uh, well represented in every every legal matter that uh, um, that comes into that office. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Thank you. One more question through you, Madam Chair. Um, mm -hmm. Working for a city, it's fairly different, or very different than the private sector because you will have differences of opinions and uh, in, you know, coming from the administration, the city council, uh, we are a nine member body and we, we all have similarities when it comes to issues, but we also have disagreements when it comes to the same issue. Uh, you as one of our attorneys representing the interests of the city as a whole, how will you handle those differences of opinions when they, when they come up? Well, I, um, I don't view my position as a political one. So um, more importantly, this is a one-year contract. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm certainly not going to, uh, I'm not gonna go against my own ethics my own ethical obligations. I, I, I think any good attorney, regardless of, of what type of law you practice, no matter what you do, um, the best attorneys are the ones who can analyze a case, take all the different sources of information, uh, decide what, what the facts of the case are, and then provide an experienced, um, intelligent, objective analysis of the legal issues. Um, I think that's the job of the city attorney. Uh, that's what my job is now and hopefully will be for some time. So um, that's the way I would handle it. I, it's, um, it's not a political position. Um, I, uh, and I've, I've been doing this for a long time. So I, uh, I do understand how to, how to sift through um, difficult, convoluted, uh, sets of facts and situations, analyze the situation, and provide the best legal solution to resolve those situations. So I've um, been doing that for a long time. The transition so far has been, been fine. I don't see any reason why that will not continue here. So I, that's what I'll be bringing to the table here. Um, so that's what you'll get from me. Thank you. No further questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Attorney Corrigan, thank you for being here with us this evening. Um, I know that we allow our um, city attorneys, we have with um, the other two attorneys that were here, Ruan Owen, um, uh, the other gentleman who left, yeah, Kukuso, which I believe it's his position that you're gonna be complete, uh, completing the term of filling. Um, we allow them to have a private practice and, and to work at their private practice. Um, I heard you speak of you having worked before for other municipalities, other situations that you have done, say with the labor unions and, and stuff like that. Um, what, can you give us like an example of something that you um, feel would be an asset for us to know about you that you can say, I did this, kudos to me with another municipality? Uh, with another municipality, well, um, 
Yeah, there's, uh, well, here's, here's the thing. Um, sort of let me give you the analogy. The best defense attorneys mm. typically are former prosecutors. Okay, I think that's maybe not across the board, but generally speaking, that's true. Um, so I've been dealing with municipalities from the opposite side of, of the table. Um, I actually um, sued a municipality uh, in western Massachusetts uh, a few years ago and obtained a significant six-figure judgment against that municipality. It's actually a, a subdivision of it was a, a redevelopment authority um, on behalf of a client. Um, so, and I don't want to get into the details of these, specific, although it is a matter of public Just record. A little overview. It's a matter of public record and the judgment's final. Um, so, uh, you know, that type of experience um, I think is invaluable. I mean, you can go one of two ways, I guess, when you, when you look for a city attorney. You can look for somebody, let's say, who's been doing the same kind of work in another municipality, or you can look for somebody who's just a very good attorney who's maybe been doing it from the other side of the table. So, um, so that's just one example. I mean, I've, you know, it's, my municipal experience is not all litigation against municipalities. I don't profess to be, I'm not, you know, that's not my. Your forte. My drive. Um, but I have done it and I think it's very important because now from this perspective, I know what these plaintiff's attorneys are thinking. I know the strategies, I know the legal issues that they're considering, um, and, uh, and now I can bring that, I've already, I've already been doing it, as I mentioned earlier, I've already um, you know, had a case dismissed and I, I plan to dismiss another one. Mm -hmm. So uh, not that the attorneys currently in the office wouldn't be able to do that, but, but it's just a different, different mindset, different experience that you bring to the table that you're able to see things from a different vantage point. I think it's very valuable. Mm -hmm. So um, so that particular case is one, and, and I mean, there are just so many others. I mean, I've, uh, I've represented real estate developers and, and, and homeowners in, in, in zoning matters and taken appeals up to Superior Land Court um, and, um, and, and worked, uh, worked on those issues. And once again, um, you know, you just can't put a price tag on having the experience from the other side and working with municipal council um, and having an understanding of, of, of what the other person is thinking and, mm -hmm. and may be doing. So, so that's, that's, what I've, uh, that's what I've done. So um, you will be working in your private practice as well as, as within the city of Lawrence, or are you just going to, um, you don't know yet? I don't, I don't plan to... I really don't want to uh, have two jobs. Um, you know, I've been doing the other thing for a long time, so it's very difficult just to, to simply walk away. And this opportunity did come up rather suddenly. So I am still in the process of, um, of transferring cases to other attorneys, uh, to closing matters up. Uh, I've been working some nights and weekends doing some of that other stuff. But uh, no, my contract, uh, specifies that I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be working here full time and dedicating myself to mm -hmm. this. So I really can't be doing that um, just from a purely ethical standpoint. I don't think the Board of Bar Overseers would appreciate my having, um, uh, you know, my, my dealing with litigation matters uh, in court on behalf of a private client when I'm working for the city. So. You know, it's, uh, it's something that I'm in the process of doing, in the process of, uh, of winding down and putting on hold, really, um, hopefully for a year mm. and hopefully for more, mm. but at least for a year. And so that process is a little bit ongoing, but in, in the works. And, and I don't, so far, it has not detracted from uh, my dedication to the city. This is, I mean, I'm here full time. Um, and so this is my primary focus for now. That other um, business endeavor is secondary, but it is something that I need to, to deal with and work on. Thankfully, I have uh, um, colleagues who have been willing to take on matters for me and, and keep things uh, rolling in my absence. So I've been very fortunate on that, but, but there is some work that I need to do, frankly. Uh, and I don't 
I don't plan to have a separate practice because most of what I do is litigation work. I can't be, can't be called into Essex Superior Court here uh, on a private matter when I'm working upstairs. I just, I wouldn't even want to think about the logistics of having to ask for unpaid leave and so on and so forth. I don't want to deal with that. Um, I just want to be able to focus on this um, for the duration of the contractual period, uh, which once again is will be hopefully one year and then and then beyond. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I appreciate your honesty and your answer, because um, that was going to be my my question. You you kind of answered it all together, as in, were you holding other cases that can maybe affect? you coming to work for us, um, you having other partners, would they be able to take on some of your load, um, being as in, you know, all of those uh, cases that you may have that are gonna maybe be contradicting to some of the stuff you're gonna be doing here for us, you having been on the other side, um, or maybe taking cases on, uh, or being in a case, or one of your colleagues being on a case that's, now you being on our side, they're on their side, is that gonna cause any conflict of interest with you and your colleague or on your own private sector, not within the city itself? So I just wanted to make sure that these are things that could arise. Um, I, just me, myself here thinking about that, I would, I, want, I would want you to be fair about that and I can see that you are a type of fair person that can say I can separate this from that and this is what I'm working towards, getting this resolved or, or not getting it resolved. Um, I wanted to know the answers to these questions regarding uh, your licenses and the bar association that um, because we these are things that we're going to be paying but i think that if you have your own private practice there are others that we needed to pay so i kind of wanted to know that's why i i kind of wanted charlie here so that we get these answered so that we know what we're in for what we're gonna if you are gonna um gonna be doing your own private practice do we pay any extra for that or not pay because with the other ones, we would know, okay, this is this is in their contract. These are the things that we're gonna pay for because they're gonna up uphold or not uphold their private practice or any other information that we need to know regarding um, the details of your contract for the next year. Sure, sure. Those are my questions. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Bernal, can you please? Um, Thank you. Just in the past, we'd had issues on occasion where uh, appointments would come down without the contract and so I made a point to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. It's been really if it does happen again, I don't want to knock on wood that it will never happen. But that's one of my goals. So you should have in your packets his contract, and it should state any fees that we're paying on his behalf. Um, I think it's just a general malpractice. I don't, I don't know. Maybe the Badu's whatever he, we're paying as the city, it is stated in the contract, and you do have the contracts in front of you. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I'll get it for you. Uh, no, yeah, we we do have it here. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to uh, make as a clarification is that I do believe, one second here, this con this information was given to us tonight, the contract information. No. It was in there? Yeah. We just had an Be additional copy. Uh, of that one letter? Yeah. Because I had not seen it in my packet until until it was given to me by our council president along with the other application for Ms. Melancon. When the original application went down prior to the council's agenda closing, his contract, his resume, his application, all of that was provided to the clerk, and I believe it's in your packages. Ms. Melancon's application came in late. I gave that to you guys last Tuesday at the meeting, and I apologize for that. But you should have had Attorney Corrigan's information since prior to the agenda closing, you know, two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Has everyone here, uh, has the committee had a chance to go over um, his contract of employment? Has anybody here? Madam Chair. Council Raptor. I did. It, um, it looks pretty standard. It's a boilerplate. Um, I felt comfortable after reading it. And um, I would just add for the record that um, any questions regarding his professional background, like any professional licensure, uh, you can go to the BBO site. I, this is totally this is totally off track, but I figured I'd add it because I looked. Um, you can go to the BBO and see if there's been any professional complaints against Mr. Corrigan or any attorney for that matter that is in good standing with the BBO. Thank you. 
um, Councillor Abdul. Any questions, um, Councillor De Pena? No. Regarding the contract? No? Thank you. Councillor Vasquez, any questions regarding the contract? No. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you could just give me one second. Um, Chief of Staff for now, can you please come to the podium? I'm sorry, Mr. Corrigan. Uh, so we have here that he will be giving, given three weeks um, for vacation. Is that what um, the other attorney had? Is this a modification to this That's particular? That's what Dean had. Um, Raquel actually gets four weeks. Um, Raquel Ruano, remember we had that big discussion with her? I remember. That's why I was like, yeah. is this a, okay. But she's, he's, the, the more standard was the three, and he's getting the three. Um, she had gotten four. They said it was accidental because they were going off of Mark Ionello's. So for whatever reason, she did get four. But he is getting three. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that second assistant appointment will confirm. Okay, thank you. I don't see that there be any other um, questions that I would have regarding the contract of employment for yourself at this moment. Okay. Um, I don't have any other any further questions regarding the interview of Mr. Corrigan. If the council doesn't have the committee doesn't have any further questions, I will accept a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion to recommend to the full council favorable our favorable recommendation of Mr. Corrigan. And that motion has been made. Any seconds? Second. Motion has been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. So we will just, uh, you will be coming before us. I believe the date is going to be Tuesday, um, sorry, the 19th. Tuesday the 19th at 7 p.m. Please be here in council chambers for the approval of the full committee. Thank you for coming before us this evening, and I hope it wasn't that hard, uh, harder than it would be litigation if he was to go anywhere else. <laughs> Not difficult at all. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, and thank you for having the patience to work with the City of Lawrence. Thank you. <laughs> Counselors, um, is there any other business? Wait a second here. Water and sewer supervisor position. What's it to comply with? Okay. Are there any other tabled items, new or tabled, that you would like to take off the table at this moment? Counselor Abdu? Stefania? Council President, any? Um, Madam Chair, I would suggest. Um, that for any documents that date 2010, 2012, Housekeeping. and even 2014 to send correspondence to all of these sponsors. Uh, and for the purpose of not taking one by one as some uh, out of table matters, I would uh, like to make a motion to do it as a whole. The motion's been made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, the ayes have it. The motion is to grab and select all of the new businesses as of tabled item 39014, which is new business as of December 2nd, 2014. Or would you like to do for the full, for the full entire? I think if we go with, we already know what, what's going to happen here. We're just okay. waiting for um, Commissioner Pena. So anything that dates March 5th, 17, 2015. Okay. Yeah. So motion will read that any item on the tabled, under tabled items, starting with document 7515, which is tabled new business as of March 17, 2015, tabled new items under December 2nd, 2014, tabled new business items under October 21st, 2014, tabled new business items under April 1st, 2014, tabled new business items as of February 25th and March 4th, 2014, tabled new business items as of November 7th, 2012, tabled new business items as of February 7th, 2012, tabled new business items as of December 7th, 2010, tabled new business items as of August 17th, 2010, tabled new business as of April 6th, 2010, and tabled new business as of March 16th, 2010. Motion's been made. Second. 
to send correspondence to uh, everyone here and to make sure to let us know what they would like to do with these items. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yes, have it. Motion to be table every <coughs> single item. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Councillors, if there's no other items that you would like to discuss this evening, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you for being with us this evening. This was our first personnel committee meeting, and everyone that was here this evening will be here on Tuesday, the 19th at 7 p.m. Our ordinance committee meeting will be as follows. Just wait a couple minutes for that to happen. Thank you.